One of my favorites buy and fly today is the Gepard C Mark V. This drone comes in two versions, the X version, the one that I have here, and the dead cat version where the props are not in view. The reason why I think this drone is so good is not only because the way that it looks with this nice fronting metal protecting the camera, but I like the fact that it's very easy to repair or very easy to access the electronic just by removing the top plate. You see everything, you have access to everything, and you can work on this drone without complications like, let's say, the iFly Evoke, which is very difficult to work inside. Gepard C has also done a very good job tuning this drone and it flies amazingly. And now Gepard C has launched the Mark V 7 inches, which it's basically the same drone, it's the same body, the same weight, the whole frame is built, but it changes the arms from 5 inches to 7 inches. They are calling it something like Mark 5 7 LR long range which I believe is a name that is a bit complicated, but I mean, it's just the name, right? I also, I don't believe that there is like a upgrade kit where you can buy directly the arms by themselves in, the, in a set to turn your five inches Mark V into a seven inches, but there is kind of like a loophole. And if you buy the spare arms of seven inches, then you just change that in, in your Mark V and you have now the, the bigger brother, the seven inches long range. In my case, I got the full frame, which is also available, or you can buy the whole drone already as a BNF. But I got the frame because I wanted to build it. I wanted to check it out and see what this drone in seven inches can do because I like the five inches so much. I tried to build it as close as possible as to what GEPRC creates and sells as a Binance Fly to give you a review on my opinion about this drone. I changed two things though. Number one, it's the beeper. Uh, the beeper that I have in here is a self-standing beeper. Those ones that even if the battery flies away, your beeper is, it has a little battery. I, I believe it's an 1S. 200 million per hours or something like that, where it can uh, power the beeper for a few hours or days. I'm not sure how long it does, but it gives you a better chance to find your drone if you uh, drop it and the battery disconnect. The other thing is that this beeper is much louder than the regular one that the Gepard C uh, Mark V brings. And again, if I'm thinking about a seven inches, I'm thinking about long range, I'm thinking about that I'm going to fly where there could be potential issues and I can drop the, the drone, right? So I want to have the best possibilities to find it if, uh, if it drops from the sky. And these kind of beepers with flashing and very loud and self-powered batteries, in my opinion, are a must if you're doing a long range drone. The other change that I did was that, I don't know why GEPRC doesn't have a diversity Express LRS receiver, which means that any drone that they do in Express LRS version only have one antenna for the receiver. Again, this is a seven inches long range. I want the best possibilities to fly it as long as possible. Therefore, I added a diversity Express LRS receiver and I just hang the second antenna here on the side. Thanks God, the Express LRS antennas are very small and then it fits kind of whatever you want in the drone. Beside those two changes, it's this is a walk snail version but everything else is the same as uh, Gepard C will do. The motors are 2806.5, SpeedX2, and the frame and the GPS is the M8 from Gepard C as well. The camera, as I said, is Voxnell version 2, and I'm going to give you my opinion on this drone right now. I tested this drone in two different scenarios. The freestyle scenario where I flew it with a, a LiPo. I don't have very big LiPo batteries, so I think the, the biggest one that I have is 1500. And I flew it with that battery uh, and 
it behaves pretty well. It behaves very similar to the Mark V. With the LiPo 1500 that I use, I got something around seven minutes of flight, which I think is pretty cool. If you if you are going for a ride and you still want to do some flip flops and some things around with your drone, you can still do it with this one. It, it's not that it's long range; you are not going to be able to do those kind of movements. But with the LiPo, you can do some of those if not all of them, feels very nice on the control. The drone doesn't have any kind of problem uh, behaving freestyle. But of course, it's not actually made for that, right? It's, first of all, it's a dead cat, and secondly, it's a seven inches drone. And that's where my second scenario comes. I wanted to test this, and, and the main reason why I wanted this drone was to try to fly long, stable, cruising, having nice view, these kind of things that you do when you have a seven inches drone. One of the things that happened when I got this drone um, is that I started to think about the GPS. A lot of people is talking about the GPS with an M10 chip, getting a lot of satellites and being much faster, etc., etc. And I was thinking, should I get an M10 directly here and use my drone with that? But again, as I said in the beginning, I wanted to try to have the drone as similar as possible as to what Gepard C sells. And I added the, the M8 GPS. And I don't find any kind of problem. I turn the drone on uh, or I connect the battery and I get satellites in around a minute or even less than a minute. I was actually pretty surprised when I started to hear the beeps that the drone was ready and I was still fussling around with my equipment to get ready to fly. So in that sense, I don't see any problem. Number two, I get around 10 satellites uh, from the beginning. It keeps very stable on 10 satellites during my flight. It's not dropping them or losing them or anything. Of course, if you go with an M10, you're gonna get maybe 20, 19 satellites, which is always better, right? But what I'm trying to say is that there is nothing to worry about because you have an M8 in these drones and not the newest and coolest M10 um, GPS. I built the Walk Snell version and a lot of conversation has happened around the instability of GPS together with Walk Snell, especially the version one of the VTX. Um, I, again, to be honest, as long as you had the GPS a little bit far away from the VTX, it didn't, I didn't find those kind of issues. I could fly and get satellites, uh, stable satellites for my whole flight without a problem in other drones, right? Uh, this is the V2 of the Walk Snail, and I don't see any kind of issue on that sense. As I said, the GPS is stable, it gives me good information. I have my 10 satellites during the whole trip. So in that sense, I didn't find any kind of issue using the, the Walk Snail uh, VTX. And uh, why do I use Walk Snail? Because I think it's giving me what I want. It's, it's a good quality. It's uh, easy to build. There is no problem. There is. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper than an O3. So, and I'm very happy with my Walk Snail system, and that's why almost every drone that I have now it's Walk Snail. Then it's the battery with the Leon uh, 6S that I have. I built myself using VTC Sony cells. I'm getting 19 minutes of fly. So 19 minutes with one pack, I will calculate that maybe you get 10 more minutes if you're flying with a two pack. I have to do the test, but it should be something around that. The only thing that I can complain from this setup that I have here is that when I was flying, uh, my VTX range, my video range wasn't as good as I was expecting as, and as good as I have gotten with other drones that I that I'm using the same system, the same walk snail system. I recently built this other drone, which is just a six, um, six inches drone that I've been using to fly long range with very small lightweight design. Of course, there are a few 
downside of having something like this and the main one is that you cannot carry anything on a drone that is this light if you are thinking about having like a gopro or having a very long big battery this is not the kind of drone that you want right but in this case this is a custom made frame uh, but six inches with super props in view so a lot of people want want to have this but this setup it's very similar to the mark 5 that i have here the seven inches it's the vtx uh, version 2 from wax now and with this one i can go almost double the distance that i can go with the mark 5 seven inches that i have here and i started to think what the difference why if the systems are so similar using the same vtx why can i go so much farther with the other one than this and the only thing that i can think about my my current theory is the antenna the vtx antenna the gepard c has a gepard c antenna which i've never done any kind of test uh, to see the quality I always thought that it was going to be better than the Wax Nails antenna and most probably they are, right? But in this drone that I have here, the APUS 6, I have a true RC antenna. And I remember when I did the change from the Wax Nail antennas to the true RC antenna, my tests showed that the true RC antenna was giving me more than double the distance compared to the, the stock wax nail antenna which makes me think that that's the reason why i didn't get the range that i wanted or that i expected when i was flying with this drone um, this antenna i'm planning to replace this antenna and do and do a new test with a true rc antenna but the the gap rc setup has this uh, hole for antenna that goes ufl connector directly to the antenna so you don't have a way to change the antenna unless you open the drone and you open the vtx and you disassemble everything since i want to play with some antennas to do some tests and so on what i'm planning to do is to replace uh, that tpu part and add an sma connector or adapter so i can exchange easily the antennas and see which one performs better for that I needed to go and design uh, my own part in TPU because no one has done it so far. There is no SMA connector for the Mark V, at least that I have found. So now, now that I designed it and it fits and it's working, I'm going to do the change, put an adapter there for SMA and start testing different antennas to see if my range improves, which I'm pretty sure that it's going to do. Another thing that I think is pretty cool is that if I have one of those SMA connectors, I'm going to be able just to swap the antenna that I have in the APU6 directly on the Mark V and save some bucks there by, by using the same antenna. Let's see. If you are interested in getting this design, it's in my printable profile. You can go to printables.com and look for NordFPV and you're gonna get all the designs that I have. They are available there for you to download and print. And now this one, it's there. So now here are my final thoughts about this drone. The drone flies very well. I like the way that it flies with LiPo or with a Leon battery. Uh, with both of them 6S the drone behaves very very nicely there is no one piece here that I would change beside what I've been talking about the antenna which we will see later how the performance change the range the VTX range change once that I started to test with different antennas but then I have to wonder what the hell is KPRC doing offering three different seven inches drone kind of at the same time putting it together in the market without having a big differentiator between each other right today we have the mark 5 7 inches you have the moss 7 and you have the crux 75. what's the difference between the three of them i'm not so sure i ask Gepard C, what was the selling point of each one of them? 
they didn't have a very satisfactory answer for me either I believe the MOS 7 or the MOS uh, whatever is the name MOS 7 doesn't accept wax nail I'm not 100% sure or at least they don't sell it with wax nail so it's it's kind of dedicated to the O3 or the DJI ecosystem but I mean that's not a selling point right the Croc 75 has a different body where the camera is very forward compared to the props so maybe that's better if you are filming if you want to have a, a, a GoPro on the top and make sure that you don't get the, the props in view but I mean you can get you can achieve that with the Mark V and with the MOS 7 as well so again I'm not sure why they have the three of them I don't I'm not sure what's the difference between the three of them I'm pretty sure that any if you have any of the three you're gonna be happy flying getting your your shots being interested on, on getting some nice cruising time in the air with your drones but again if you come and you ask me which of the three of them you should choose I'm, I'm gonna say any most probably so I'm very happy with my Mark 5 7 inches. Uh, I like the design of the drone. It's very, very stable, very, very hard. I'm happy with what I'm getting and I'm happy that I can still use my Wax Nail with these drones without any problem uh, with the GPS or anything like that. This is what I have for you today. I hope you get some nice information out of it and hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching.